At the beginning of the 19th century, uh, Jean-Robert Argand, um, who was a bookshop manager uh, and really just an amateur mathematician, not a professional mathematician, read some mathematics books in his bookshop. And he thought long and hard about how to represent complex numbers geometrically. And he came up with the following idea. If we draw uh, a diagram like this, which um, we think of as kind of being the same as the plane, but instead of having an x-axis and a y-axis, we instead have a real axis horizontally and an imaginary axis vertically, then we can plot complex numbers. So for example, to plot one plus i, we would go one across on the real axis and one up on the imaginary axis. To plot minus four, minus two i, we go four across and two down. And uh, some people also draw these as vectors, so you could also draw this. Um, so that's how to plot complex numbers on an Argand diagram and you're going to have a go at exploring what happens if you add or subtract or multiply complex numbers, what effect that has geometrically. Uh, we now move on to the modulus of a complex number. So just like for real numbers, the modulus of a complex number is its distance from the origin. So we saw previously that this is also given by the formula, the modulus of z is the square root of z times its conjugate, its complex conjugate. Um, and we know if z is x plus i y, then the modulus is the square root of x squared plus y squared. And this also follows from Pythagoras' theorem. If we have zero and then z, and z is x plus i y, then by Pythagoras, the diagonal of this, um, the hypotenuse of this triangle is given by the square root of x squared plus y squared. So for example, the modulus of 3 plus 2i is the root of 3 squared plus 2 squared, which is root 13. We now move on to the argument of a complex number z. This is the angle that the line from 0 to z makes with the positive real axis, measured anti-clockwise. So if we have a complex number z here, and we measure this anti-clockwise angle, then uh, that's the argument of this complex number. The principal argument is the argument that lies in the interval from minus pi to pi. So if, we, if we're working in radians, that is. So obviously a lot of different possible values um, the argument can take, because, for example, this number here, if we think about uh, minus 1 plus i, then we know this is 90 degrees, this is 1 and this is 1, so this is pi by 4. So the argument is going to be it's pi by 2 and that's pi by 4, so the argument is 3 pi by 4, but we could also have, add multiples of 2 pi and it wouldn't change the argument but the principal argument would be 3 pi by 4. So you have to be careful if you need the principal argument and you're in one of the bottom two quadrants, you might want to go back and measure clockwise and make your angle negative. So for example, the principal argument of minus i, minus i would be here. If we would go around this way, around anti-clockwise, and get um, 3 pi by 2, but if we want the principal arguments, we need to go this way, and it's going to be minus pi by 2. So the argument of minus i is minus pi by 2. In general, to find the argument of a complex number, we need to use trigonometry. So given a number, let's say, down here this time, uh, yeah, let's go with minus 4 minus 2i. So to find the argument of this complex number, we can make a right angled triangle here. This is 4 and this is 2. And then we can find this angle here. If we call this angle theta, then we have that tan theta is 2 over 4, 
or a half. So theta is arctan of a half. And then to find the principal argument, well, if we were to go back all the way from zero to over here, we would get minus pi. So the, the principal argument of minus four minus two i is going to be minus pi plus this angle theta. And I don't know what this angle theta is, but let's work it out. So, so arctan of half is 0.46. If we subtract pi, we obtain minus 2.68 to 3SF. So that's the principal argument of minus 4 minus 2i.